Hi, I'm Erica Gamet with InDesign Secrets, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to put a line or a block back behind your text. Now, I know that doesn't sound like it's such a big deal. You just draw out a line and plop it back behind your text, right? Well, I want to create something that travels along with the text, and that's where paragraph rules come in. These aren't rules that govern paragraphs, but rules that sit above or below and become a part of the text. So let's look at this block of text here. I'd like to put a thick red line back behind the headlines. We'll start with this one here. And to do that, we head over to the Paragraph panel, up to the Menu, and come down and choose Paragraph Rules. Let's make sure our preview's on so we can see what's happening. And then we need to choose whether or not we want to put a rule above or a rule below. If you're putting something that's centered, you can choose whichever one you want. Let's choose Rule Below, and then we need to click Rule On so that it actually shows up. And by default, we can see that it's spanning the width of the column, or in this case, the, the one column in the text frame. And that's set over here, Width Column. But let's just set it so that it actually only spans the width of the text. I also want to make it thicker. So I'll just bring this up a bit. And I wanted it to be red. Right now, it's text color. And that's great if you always want it to be the same exact color of your text. You don't actually choose the color. You just say text color, and it will change along with the text. But we want to make it red, so we'll do that. And then I actually want it sitting back behind a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead over here to the offset, and I'm going to choose a negative value to move that line up. Let's actually make that a little bit thinner. There we go. And down, we can play with that till we get it just right. And also, it's a little dark. So maybe let's make it 50%. There we go. Now we have it set to the width of the text, and it's only going as far as the text. Let's actually make that hang out on the left and right a little bit. So we need to do a left and right indent, and we need to do negative values. There we go. So now that looks pretty good. And if the length of the line changes, that line will also increase. And because it's part of the text, as I add text up above here, it obviously moves down. Let's go on to the next page. And here's some banners that I've set up with the same paragraph rules that are in here. And the square shape is fine, but what if we wanted to do a rounded banner, like this one here. I'm going to go ahead and use the paragraph style that I have. Now I've got a nice banner with rounded edges back behind. So let's walk through doing that here. I've got this second banner that's here. Let's go back to the paragraph panel, down to paragraph rules. And we see that we have a rule above set. Again, it's back behind, so it doesn't matter if I've chosen above or below. And I've got it nice and thick. It's orange. And I've got a little bit of offset and some indent here as well. But let's go ahead and add the rounded corners. To do that, we'll go up to the stroke type, and we're going to choose dotted. And now we've got a nice dotted line back behind, and that looks pretty cool. Maybe that's what we want, and we leave it right there. But what I wanted to do is I want the line to fill in with the rest of that color. So for that, we go down to the gap color, choose the same color that we chose for the line, and it fills in all the space in between the dots. And you can get some really interesting looks if you play with the gap color even more. Let's take this color here. Come down to Paragraph Rules. And instead of blue as the gap color, let's choose red. That's actually pretty hard to see, but I do have a style already set up where I've changed the color of the text, I put a lighter tint back on the stroke, and I also dropped the line down below. On this last one, let's make a sun with our underline. First, I'm going to do a Shift Return on this text so that I have the headline on two lines. But I do want to keep it as one paragraph. And that's important because otherwise it would do an entirely different stroke on the second paragraph. So let's come back to the paragraph rules and let's make the size a lot bigger. Let's make it like 105. And it's super high. We're going to have to move that down so the offset needs to come down a bit. I just want to center it up and down a little bit. Then I'm also going to turn off the gap color. So I don't want there to be any gap color. Now we've just got those two dots. But now I'm going to play with the left and right indent until they both move in. And I want to try and keep them the same amount so that they're nice and centered. What I'm doing is moving those dots closer and closer until there's actually only one dot. There we go, because if I do too many, it disappears. And depending on the width and how long your line is, those two should match up. They're pretty close, but not exact. And then the last thing we need to do is change the sunshine to yellow. And as you can see, all of these have been incorporated into styles, which means that I can make these paragraph adjustments to my text quickly and across my entire document. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. For thousands more InDesign articles and tutorials, check out InDesignSecrets.com. There you can sign up for our free InDesign Tip of the Week. Thanks for learning with us.